respiratory quotient. Okay, so we're going to look at the generally known as RQ and we're going to look at what it is and how we use it. Respiratory quotient is the volume of carbon dioxide released divided by the volume of oxygen consumed. Okay, so let's take glucose as a respiratory substrate to begin with. You may well know by now that glucose is C6H12O6, and we react that with or combine that with six molecules of oxygen, and we form six water, six H2O, and six carbon dioxide. So this is a balanced equation for respiration of glucose. So here we can see we've got uh, six oxygen and we've got six carbon dioxide. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put a table down this side. So let's do this over here. So we've got six CO2 divided by our six O2. So that's six over six. which equals big fat one. So respiring glucose, we have a respiratory quotient of one. We can look at different respiratory substrates to see how much oxygen is needed to respire them, basically. So let's do this in a little table. I'm gonna have the respiratory substrate here. So let's think of some, well, we've, we learned from Krebs cycle that we can actually also respire fats, lipids. We can respire proteins, but we never do unless there's basically no no lipids or carbohydrates around, and we can respire carbohydrates. So let's make a little table. And we have two columns. First one is going to be respiratory quotient. And this I'm going to do as kilojoules of energy per gram. So we can kind of see what's going on here. Okay, let's put some numbers in this table. Well, Fats or lipids, they're going to have the lowest at about 0 0.7. Proteins, a little bit higher, 0 0.9. And we can say carbohydrates, we're going to have one. I might just tack on the end of this table, actually, if you're respiring partially or fully anaerobically. Add another row. And for these guys, it's going to have a RQ of more than one. I'm going to write one plus. And the energy that these compounds contain is also to do with their chemical bonds, and you don't need to know any of the details there. But I'm just going to write high to low. So we can use this as a little indicator of how much energy they have per gram. Okay, so how do we use this and what are the practical applications? What questions are they going to ask you? So we can find out what type of respiratory substrate an organism is using. Obviously, this will give us an indication. So, I mean, this could be a bacteria in a culture medium which has got different respiratory substrates. You could be looking at a human that see which ones they're, uh, you, on a mixed diet of fat and carbohydrates, see which ones they're actually metabolizing. You can also tell by this whether an organism is respiring partially or fully anaerobically. And remember, if it's anaerobic, it's greater than one. I'm gonna put one plus. So we can apply a couple of this to humans and we can look at um, what their regular RQ usually is. So usually we have an RQ between 0 0.7 and 1, which tells us that we're at rest we're either we're respiring a combination of carbohydrates and fats, lipids. We don't use protein, as I said, unless we absolutely have to. If you're starving on a desert island, then you'll start metabolizing 
proteins, but generally speaking, we can't store them and we don't bother respiring them. Another point to note is about plants. Plants are going to sometimes have a low RQ because if we think about what they're doing in their other reaction, photosynthesis, they can use the carbon dioxide from respiration and they can use that in photosynthesis. So sometimes they don't release as much CO2 as they normally would. Now, if I was in your exam, I would be careful to say here the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction. Be as specific as you can. There's no point throwing marks away for just being a little bit sloppy and saying photosynthesis. I'm going to say here, I'm going to say the Calvin cycle. They'll always accept the Calvin cycle or if you prefer the light independent reaction. And that is all you need to know about RQ. To get more biology videos from me, subscribe to the channel. And of course, don't forget to try out my complete A-level course in the free trial over on the Taylor Tutors website. Up next, you can transform your grade in about an hour with my grade transformations playlist, or you can watch the video that's been magically selected for you from the people at YouTube.